Turkey's interior minister said an attack on the premises of the Turkish aerospace and defense company Tuzas on Wednesday left a number of people dead or injured. Ali Yerlikaya did not provide further details on the attack on Turkish Aerospace Industries Inc. in the outskirts of the capital, Ankara. Haberturk Television said the explosion may have been caused by a suicide bomber. Media reports said an explosion followed by gunfire was heard at the complex. Security forces, ambulances and firefighters were dispatched to the site, NTV Television reported. Employees at the company were taken to a safe area, Haberturk said. The South Korean Foreign Ministry summoned the Russian ambassador in Seoul and protested against the dispatch of North Korean troops to Ukraine, the Yonhap News Agency reported. As Build columnist Albert Link writes, the call-up of soldiers from the DPRK could be a huge mistake for Vladimir Putin, as he suddenly gets a new enemy in South Korea. A terrible scenario for Putin, South Korea which has so far supported Ukraine only with humanitarian aid and helmets, reacts to Kim's entry into the war by sending weapons to Ukraine. South Korea has built one of the world's largest armies, with about 3.6 million soldiers, 500,000 active, 3.1 million reserves. The country's arms industry is thriving, with weapons manufactured to NATO standards. The South Korean government has set a goal of becoming the world's fourth-largest arms exporter by 2027, after the United States, Russia, and France. If South Korea decides to support Ukraine with weapons, this will have a huge impact on the course of the military conflict, experts say. It is reported earlier that the DPRK military, trying to escape from the Kursk region, may be drawn into assaults against the Ukrainian armed forces. In particular, they may be forced to attack positions in the same Kursk region. In addition, the military from the DPRK may be redeployed closer to Ukraine. However, according to the expert, they may presumably be used in the Kursk region to claim that they are allegedly defending Russian territory.
Israeli military spokesperson Daniel Hagari said on Tuesday that the Israeli Air Force carried out a series of precise strikes on Hezbollah financial stronghold in Lebanon. One of our main targets last night was an underground vault with millions of dollars in cash and gold. The money was being used to finance Hezbollah's attacks on Israel. This vault was deliberately located under a residential building. Our strikes will degrade Hezbollah's ability to finance its attacks on Israelis, Hagari said. He also declassified the intelligence on a bunker under a hospital in Beirut. He said the bunker has not been struck. The military official accused Iran of sending cash and gold by planes to the Iranian embassy in Beirut before it then goes directly to Hezbollah. Israel carried out strikes on Beirut overnight into Tuesday hours after announcing its plans to carry out more strikes in Lebanon against a Hezbollah-run financial institution. At least 15 branches of al qaeda al-Hassan, which Israel says uses customers' deposits to finance attacks against Israel, were hit late Sunday in the southern neighborhoods of Beirut across southern Lebanon and in eastern Bekaa Valley, where Hezbollah has a strong presence. One strike flattened a nine-story building in Beirut with a branch inside it. The Israeli military issued evacuation warnings against the strikes, and there were no reports of casualties. The Associated Press journalists witnessed strikes late on Monday in the coastal region of Uzai near Beirut's airport, and Lebanon's health ministry said an airstrike near Beirut's largest public hospital killed four, including a child, and wounded 24. It was the first strike on the Lebanese capital in 10 days. Israeli ground forces invaded Lebanon earlier this month. The military said it aims to push Hezbollah out of southern Lebanon so that tens of thousands of Israelis can return to their homes nearby after more than a year of cross-border rocket and drone attacks. Israeli airstrikes have pounded large areas of Lebanon for weeks, forcing over a million people to flee their homes. Hezbollah has been launching rockets into Israel nearly every day since Hamas's deadly raid into Israel last year that sparked the war in Gaza.